Live from the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Splunk.com 2015. Brought to you by Splunk. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Rick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas at the MGM uh, Hotel in Las Vegas for Splunk's Conference. This is SiliconANGLE's flagship program, The Cube, where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. This is day two of two <laughs> days of live coverage. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Jeff Frick. Our next guest is Guido Schroeder, v SVP of products. Always love to talk to the product guys because we always get the scoop. Splunk is still a product company. Guido, great to see you again. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Good morning, John. Good morning, Jeff. Um, really I love, love you guys. It's always fun <laughs> to be here. <laughs> First time. This is like we're waiting for this interview all day yesterday. Yeah, can't wait for Guido, yeah. Uh, product. It's one of the best times you know, of my stay in Las Vegas every time. Oh, I'm sure you say it to all the CUBE hosts. <laughs> oh, that's us. Uh, four years running. Um, seriously, we love talking to you because you're the highlight of the show for us because the product was what makes Splunk great. You yep. have great customers yep. who use the product. You're great product-centric, customer-centric. And this is where all the action is, and you guys have grown significantly. So give us the quick product update. What's changed from last year to this year, real quick? Well, you know, first of all, I have to say I'm super happy with how the show went. Uh, and it, it's kind of amazing. I mean, every year when I'm leaving, I'm asking myself, wow, you know, we set the bar pretty high, and how can you ever top it in the next year when you are coming back? And so, you know, despite the fact that I, I'm building that stuff with my team and I should know it, I'm myself also, you know, kind of blown away by the lineup of new stuff that we had. Uh, and, you know, I think uh, we made really a lot of progress uh, in all of the areas that are important for us. You saw the announcement of the new enterprise release, 6.3. I think that's a really super strong story. The so Cisco the benchmark Performance speed. improvements that we had. Huge. Uh, and, you know, Cisco tried it already out and benchmarked it. And, you know, we were also blown away really by the improvements that they have seen. Uh, you saw in the in the demo that Nate did, then also the uh, you know event collector, which is I, I think really nice uh, for IoT type of scenarios, for DevOps types of scenarios. So I think that's a big improvement. How do you get data into Splunk without our forwarder? Yeah, so I think that's a really good story. And then uh, you know the things we just did around making the product more enterprise ready. Yeah, so what do you need for high availability? How do you manage? larger Splunk deployments, uh, so the DMC story, this distributed management console that we have, and the alerts, uh, how can you integrate Splunk, the enterprise platform, yeah, in a better way with other systems that our customers have. So, you know, open automatically a service ticket in ServiceNow, or, you know, send an email right into yeah. your, you know, chat environment or things like that. So that was, you know, our big 6.3 story. Uh, then you saw what we are doing in, in security, yeah, also I think big release, Enterprise Security 4.0. Um, I mean, we did a couple of things around workflow there, which I think are important. So this, you know, timeline and investigator journal, uh, which I think makes it really a lot easier for our customers in their security practice to share insights uh, in, in, uh, in internally with their, you know, people who are involved in these type of activities. Then the other big story was, of course, our Caspida uh, acquisition, uh, which kind of brings us really to a completely new level uh, in terms of, you know, I intelligence, how, how, how are we analyzing customer data, large amounts of customer data in an intelligent way, uh, so with this machine learning capabilities uh, that we got from uh, Caspida. And then the last, you know, big story to top it off, and that was, you know, kind of the final in the fireworks we unleashed, uh, yeah, that was really our IT service intelligence story, uh, which, you know, I think, allows our customers to do things that they might have done in the past much, much easier. So I was sitting actually this morning in a, in a panel with some of the customers who were, uh, you know, uh, our pilots uh, and uh, early adopters of it. Uh, and, you know, I think it was just spot on uh, what, you know, they gave us as feedback. Uh, so, you know, kind of, I mean, one of the customers, you know, uh, was actually implementing something themselves uh, and it took them, you know, probably two or three months and he said, hey, you know what, uh, the great thing is, this all works much, much faster now. The only downside is, you know, we, we kind of spent these two or three months before uh, in our own yeah. project, but you know, that's fine. We have now a much, much easier way to get there. 
Well, I want to ask you, congratulations, first of all, it's amazing. I it just took up three minutes of <laughs> the awesomeness that you guys just launched, and it's great. <laughs> but no, that's great success, and, and, and hats off, and yeah. congratulations to you and, and the team on the product side, oh, engineering. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I got to ask you, quick stats, what's the, what's the size of the team now? What's the growth? I mean, you were, last year, yeah. you started out, when I first interviewed you, 100 people. Yeah, now right, yeah. so including, uh, you know, the Caspita team, we have in engineering almost 500 people now, so, you know, over three and a half years, I'm with the company and three years between the interviews, yeah. uh, you know, we kind of grew it five times and, you know, that kind of shows you, A, the momentum yeah. that we have and also, you know, how our capabilities evolve. But, you know, I think it's quite fascinating. I mean, when I came in, the you know, company was eight years old and I think, you know, right now with the 500 people, we can execute in a year probably as much as the company, you know, could do in, in work amount uh, over the first seven or eight years of the company and that's just fantastic, you know, to point the machine now at the next target and <laughs> we're just rolling. So how do you do that? As, an, as a senior vice president, you're the leader of the troops. Pro product group is a really important. And the big discussion in Silicon Valley, certainly that we're hearing as, the, as yeah. the bubble starts to kind of slowly burst a little bit on the private companies, is managers who can scale organizations. We had the Facebook scale conference. The scale is a large scale, problem Splunk solves technology-wise. Now the people equation is interesting. How do you do it and how do you keep the talent? Well, so I mean, things are certainly getting a little tougher uh, in, the, in the Bay Area and I definitely see this every day uh, that there's quite a bit of competition around talent. Uh, and you know, my, my boss, our CEO, Godfrey Sullivan, I mean, he's in the, in the region much, much longer than I am. And he told me, you know, a couple of months ago, hey, you know what, if I think back about the years I've been in, in the Silicon Valley, I've never, you know, have seen a period where we had so many really big successes yeah, going on at the same time. I mean, in the past you had maybe one or two companies yeah, that yeah. were kind of rolling, but now you have, you know, you have Uber. Apple and Google and Facebook and LinkedIn. Uber, and Airbnb, Sales, all know, these companies. It's all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. And so that creates a little bit of strain on, on, the, on the system, you know, and we are competing with everyone. And you know, I think what has made us so far successful in competing with others that are sometimes at a larger scale you know, than us is that I think we have interesting work to offer for people. Yeah, you know? and you know, I think the new generation that's definitely part of you know, I would say their life yes, plan. Uh, you know, what what is the attraction at Splunk? And I think we have some you know compelling projects, and we also have a compelling culture you know, that you know still attracts people. And then the other thing uh, that we did relatively early at Splunk was really diversifying a little bit the talent pools in which we are tapping. Uh, so when I came in, we had already a small uh, you know, team up in Seattle. I had a lot of Microsoft people there. With the Caspita acquisition, we got now also you know, some feet on the ground in Vancouver. Uh, and you know, if you read my bio, um, I had actually a large team there in the past during my SAP times and know some talent there. So I think that's good. And then we also went offshore. Uh, you know, uh, two, two and a half years ago, starting a team in, in Shanghai that has meanwhile grown to 60, 70 people. And that helps too, yeah, to, you know, kind of have some feet on the ground and other so talent. So these beehives, these are clustered, but they're working bit. for you. Yeah. You're okay with that? Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we want, um, if, if we go to a location, I want to have some critical mass there. I don't want to have just, you know, 10 or 15 people. Right. And we have made some really strategic decisions. Uh, and then you might have seen that uh, we actually signed a lease for uh, you know a bigger facility down San in, in San Jose on uh, Santana Row, uh, and I think that also allows us to diversify a little bit better in uh, in the Bay Area, uh, where we have been more focused on on uh, San Francisco right. and the North Bay so far. Yeah. And then you've had a pretty steady cadence of acquisitions too within your product development cycle, yeah. and it seemed to be that the integration is working pretty well. Those things are not being sucked in yeah. and they go away, but you're really turning those acquisitions yeah. into into yeah. products going forward. So how are you? kind of evaluating when to, bu when to buy, when to develop? You know, and, and we, we certainly do this in a, in a strategic way. I mean, we have a backlog uh, for, uh, you know, I would say M&A uh, activities, uh, like we have a uh, backlog for our development activities. Um, and, you know, I mean, there are, there are multiple angles uh, we, we look at. I mean, we look at uh, talent in some cases. So, you know, if you look at the, the metaphor acquisition up in Vancouver, uh, you know, that was, I think, a little bit more focused on getting the right talent into the company, whereas I think the Caspita acquisition was clearly, you know, giving us a new product and a new SKU you know, that is ready to, to be sold. Uh, and the other thing, if you look at our M&A activities, I believe you will also see that we are kind of ramping it up there. Yeah. You know, we learned, I mean, the first two acquisitions, Buck Sense uh, and uh, Cloud Meter uh, were relatively small, 
tuck-in acquisitions. Uh, and I think, you know, with yeah. uh, the Caspita acquisition, we definitely upped it. There are quite, quite a bit and of those tuck-ins. Those tuck-ins are good product-oriented acquisitions. Oh yeah, yeah. They, they fill a white space. So what, yeah. are the, what are some of those white spaces? I mean, you're transitioning to the cloud, you have some areas you have to move fast on, organically and inorganically. What, what, what do you look at there? What's the opportunity? Where does Guido say and Godfrey say, oh, we need to fill some of these holes Well, faster. you know, I'm not quite sure if we, we want to, <laughs> you know, roll it out in all detail in the public, <laughs> yeah, what our next target ah, is. come but, on. You know, you <laughs> yeah, we almost got you on that one. <laughs> okay, you almost got me. But, uh, you know, one, one of the gaps we definitely filled is machine learning. Yeah, so we kind of, you know, hit two targets uh, in one go, and yeah. I think, you know, that is, is really spot on with what we needed. Uh, and you know, I think visualizations uh, remain important. Data acquisition remain important. Uh, uh, you know, maybe we need also better, you know, I would say collaboration capabilities yeah. and capabilities to actually disseminate right. information. Uh, I mean, in the moment, I would say uh, people that the product is not as sticky as I would like it to be uh, in terms of people doing work beyond just executing the search and looking at some of the metrics you know, that they're working on. And we did already a little bit of that. Uh, you know, if you look at enterprise security that we built around our analytics, some you know, workflow capabilities that you know, people can actually do more work inside the product. Right. Uh, the other piece is the, is the application and product piece versus the platform piece. Because as we look around the room here, you got a really vibrant ecosystem, and, and yeah. the logos yeah. on the booths yeah. are, are not small startups, a lot of big companies here. Yeah. So as you're looking at your product strategy, you know, where you're either going to build a solution or an app, or you know, you're really more providing a platform and letting yeah. partners plug in the pieces, how do you do some of those evaluations? Well, I mean, if you, if you look at what we have been communicating now about our portfolio, yeah, and I think this is really pretty consistent now for the second year in the row, yeah, you see, our platform uh, and platform-like products, uh, which are enterprise, Hunk, Splunk Lite, uh, and Cloud, of course, which provides the same capabilities, but just as a SaaS delivery. Uh, and then we have these different market segments uh, where Godfrey you know, hired additional leaders like Kai and Song and Rick Fitz and Mark yeah. Olson uh, to drive those. Uh, and uh, you know, I think there are still in that map yeah, that we communicated publicly, I think there are still uh, areas where, you know, we are not as far down the road as we are in with security and, and IT uh, operations. And even with an IT and, and security, you know, if you break those markets down, uh, they are also, I would say, much more diverse, yeah, where we have covered maybe, you know, 30, 40 percent of what that market constitutes. So in security, you know, I think it's our theme story. Uh, and, you know, now we do a little bit of the behavior analytics, cyber security, but how about, you know, fraud and, Compliance, uh, which are other, you know, I would say areas and applications and security, uh, and you will find the same, I would say, additional, you know, verticals in in the IT market. Yeah, where we have uh, APM, for example, uh, and I can't say that you know we are fully covering this today. We have some footprint yeah. in those markets, but we, you know, don't have in all of those areas, I would say, yet a dedicated solution. And I mean, that's definitely the other thing that is going on uh, that we started now to build really, you know, I would say. Uh, serious uh, and and fairly complete end-to-end -end solutions uh, for each of those markets. So how about the transition to the cloud? Yeah. And I want to get a product perspective because yeah. now you have the cloud out there. So first share your views of Splunk's transition to the cloud. Obviously cloud is key. People are moving to the cloud in droves. You got private and public. Um, are you guys cloud agnostic, hybrid, public, private? Do you care? I mean Splunk is a unique platform. But what does the transition to the cloud look like? What does that mean from a product standpoint? So, you know, just to maybe repeat uh, uh, what, what, the, what the product does and how it fits in the architecture. Uh, so, you know, we position ourselves really as the only hybrid play uh, in, this, in this market. So we have an on-premise product that is, has been very successful for many, many years. Uh, and cloud is gaining for many reasons a lot of traction. Uh, and we have, meanwhile, also multiple hundred customers are uh, adopting the product uh, with the same range uh, of, I would say, sizes in, in deployments that we see in on-premise as well. Yeah, so we have, meanwhile, there are also you know, a couple of terabyte sized uh, uh, customers. No? So that's, that's kind of our story, and uh, cloud and, and, and the on-prem uh, deployments actually integrate pretty well. So that's our hybrid story. Well, and you know, 
I mean, for us, clearly, what we see is there are benefits for both our customers uh, and us as a, as a software vendor as well for our customers. It's clearly the faster adoption story. Don't worry about the hardware, don't worry about the expertise, and you heard this multiple times uh, you know, from some of the, the customers that we had taped there in the keynote. Yeah, let us focus really on our business, that what we are good at, but you are much, much better, Splunk, uh, in, in doing this right. uh, yeah, for us. And I would also assume that you know, over the years, uh, at some point we get to economies of scale, yeah, where it, you know, there isn't just anyone else out there uh, in the industry or also you know, our customers themselves that have more expertise than we have yeah, deploying uh, our software. Uh, and and you know, I think we will also have some economies of scale in terms of you know, efficiencies on what type of hardware we are deploying it and yeah. managing it at scale. So that's, I think, from a customer perspective. From a software vendor perspective, our story is really that we believe, and we see this already, that we have much, much better insight what customers are actually doing, where they are sometimes struggling with the product uh, and you know, need changes or it's more help from us. Uh, and you know, last but not least, I think it allows us also to innovate at a different pace. So one of the things, and we, I, I don't know if we, you know, I have communicated this uh, uh, that broadly yet, but after the 6.3 enterprise release, we are actually switching to a quarterly release cadence, yeah, which is a big, big difference. So in the past, um, you know, if you look at our release uh, history, you know, we used to deliver more on a yearly cadence, uh, and one one of the things we have done in addition to the development on 6.3 was really retooling the whole engineering shop in a pretty massive way. Yeah, so we changed our code repository, we changed our continuous integration system, we did a lot more test automation and all these things uh, mm -hmm. to you know, kind of deliver in a much more continuous way what other, you know, I would say, native cloud companies uh, like the Facebooks and LinkedIn, LinkedIn's are, are doing for us. That's pretty significant. So oh, yeah. not a strategic initiative to yeah. get to that yeah. cadence and I, I'm yeah. sure over time you're going to crunch it down yeah. from quarterly to yeah. monthly to yeah. uh, whatever. Hundreds and I have to tell you, I, I, I love this, yeah, to, to, to deliver software this way yeah, because it just creates a lot more transparency. I mean, if you have a, and I had, you know, in my past life with, with SAP, we had some projects that were really, you know, very lengthy beasts, uh, two and a half years, three years, uh, and uh, you know, it creates a lot of difficulties. So if you have very large, you know, kind of pieces you want to move through your development pipeline, they become a lot more unpredictable and there is a lot more risk involved uh, to, you know, kind of integrate in the end everything. And with smaller pieces, uh, smaller chunks of work to move them through the pipeline, everything becomes a lot more predictable and it's also a lot, lot easier to change your agenda if you get actually yeah. feedback from your customers and say, hey, you know what, we are maybe on the wrong path there, yeah, and let's change this. It's not that easy to do if you commit to a three-year yeah, development, three development cycle. cycle. Yeah. That's so big news. And, and I think it allows us to move faster and, and also not have that much software and things that you know are basically ready and works that's being done sitting on the shelf, right. right? So I mean, if you develop for a year, there's a lot of stuff accumulating for some time that the customers don't see. Uh, and I think it's just a much healthier uh, process and the you know, end game, I think, would be what other software companies are certainly doing already, to have continuous delivery and you know, more like, especially in the cloud, call it a perpetual beta, yeah, where we just chip, you know, in yeah. a very, I would say, controlled way, small pieces of software, uh, and, you know, kind of get them into production how very quickly. How do you keep, I asked you this last year, I'm going to ask yeah. you again, is how do you keep the focus? Because one of the things that's actually your strength is the customer's focus, and the customers bring you into directions. On paper, it looks like you're defocused. Well, yeah, I mean, hey, you got to focus, you know, focus, focus, focus. But in reality, you're building a product based on customer demands, and you've got a universal use case. It's not like, there seems to be a lot of different use cases, and you're moving up the food chain. You're in business analytics now. You're at security. These aren't, these are like top line, boardroom conversations. Yeah. Well, so how, know, do I mean, to, how do you manage to focus? Well, one thing you know, I believe we, we did right is that we evolved our operational practices, uh, and I, I think we have a pretty good you know, early warning system and visibility on what's actually going on on the ground you know, in terms of work that's being done and when it's coming. Uh, and then the other thing, you know, in, in terms of what, what happens in the boardroom or um, in the in the e staff uh, on the e staff level, uh, is to some extent I think some friction uh, in the system is probably intended by setting up these market groups, uh, which 
I think makes my life a little bit more complicated yeah, on the platform side that I have so many different stakeholders now. Yeah? So I have, you know, Ian Song as a stakeholder, I have Rick with the IT markets as a stakeholder, and that's a little bit of a, you know, I would say tricky dance that I have to manage yeah, to, you know, kind of keep my stakeholders satisfied. Uh, but, you know, I believe it's the right way to do, uh, and the friction is actually somewhat healthy. Uh, and, uh, we, we just have an awesome management team. Yeah, we have an awesome CEO who's just super experienced. Uh, and you know, with all that discussion and friction that happens, I, I still believe that we are always able to do the right thing. Yeah. All right, and so what's the big guiding principle? So when you have your vision, when you do your, your product and engineering team meetings, what's the guiding principle that you share with the troops? Uh, to, that, to that audience, what's the, what's the talking points? What are the, what are the three? <laughs> What are the three things so, you say to them? You know, Keep we have coding. also, well, we have also our internal events uh, uh, at the <laughs> company, which is our SKO, our sales kickoff, which is more a company event. It's not just sales, yeah. but it's also, you know, for the engineering teams. Uh, and this, you know, happens always in February where we have the big kickoff. Uh, and I would say the one thing that you hear me consistently talk about uh, and screaming there on stage is delivery. So one of the things I, I learned from I you know one that. of my bosses and role models in the past, the one thing that a product organization is about is delivering product. Yeah. And so if you're asking what is your big principle and guiding thing, deliver. You know, I would say yeah, delivery, GSD. delivery. You know, there's this uh, Steve Barmer scene uh, where you know he was running developer, wild on stage developer, there, yeah. developer, developer, and you hear me, you know, doing that same, but just with delivery, delivery, delivery. So you that's, know, that's, that's I think, what our, our shop is about. Thanks and so it needs to be. <laughs> it, well, yeah, you got to ship code. And GSD. So thanks for sharing. Just final uh, yeah. um, sound bite for you to share with the folks. What's the vibe this year? Now, people who didn't make it here or are watching this video live or on demand, what's the vibe this year in the show? How would you categorize this year's .com? Well, f first of all, you know, I think everybody's amazed how, how big this has gotten so quickly. Uh, I mean, you really see the increments uh, in, the, in the show. Also here on the, on the partner floor, uh, how many new you know, partners and, and logos are out there. So that's definitely something I, I see quite consistently. Um, well, and I don't know, I, I mean, the good thing is, the, the, I think the crowd hasn't changed. I mean, if you attended the party yet, uh, you know, Splunk customers have been always very passionate. Yeah, they run around here with their shirts. Yeah, we have a pretty casual way, you know, of interacting with our customers. Uh, and I think, you know, that's a good thing that I, I don't think that this has changed. Uh, the customer involvement is just spectacular. So Godfrey mentions this, um, you know, that we do these local events as Splunk Lives. Uh, and to some extent, you know, we kind of did the best of best, uh, bring the best customer presentations also, you know, globally uh, here to Las Vegas. Uh, and that just continues to be really an awesome recipe uh, to hear what customers are doing and you know our customers are learning from their peers. I think that's just awesome. Guido Schroeder, SVP of Products, thanks for taking the time yes. sharing your insight and your data on theCUBE. We're ingesting a lot of data here on theCUBE. <laughs> I hope you have me next year again oh, too. Yeah, so we can't wait. Fun. We're we splunking all the data here on theCUBE. We'll be back with more after this short break. Okay, thanks for having me. Thanks.